What's up, Heat Nation? Welcome back to a, another episode of the Miami Heat Roundtable. The Miami Heat have made a fucking trade for the first time in what seems like forever. The Miami Heat were reported and linked to a player, and we actually got that player. So for today's episode, I'm here with everybody. We all had to hop on. I know we made an episode yesterday, but it's the trade deadline right now, and there's going to be a lot of moves happening throughout the NBA. Big news, too, with like the Milwaukee Bucks we can talk about a little bit later. But we had to hop on because I'm pumped. The Miami Heat traded Kyle Meatball Lowry for Terry Rozier from the Charlotte Hornets. We <laughs> finally have upgraded our point guard position. So I don't know about you guys. I'm fucking stoked. Ernest said we need to make a tweak, a little move. We didn't need to gut the roster. We just need to make some sort of move. Offensive rating has been shit. 20th. Yep. Almost like dead last almost in points per game. So I'm pumped, man. I'm excited for this. Let's talk to Trent first, get your opinion. What are your thoughts, man? Because like I said yesterday, we don't believe shit until it happens. That's what Trent and I said. I said, seeing is believing. I woke up, I saw a Woj bomb and a Shams quote. I believe it, man. We're here. Finally. I, look, man, look, as y'all see, I'm in the car. I'm at work right now, but the grind don't stop, man. Heat Nation, we stand on top, dog. It don't matter if I'm at here or there, whatever the case may be. But Tay Rozier is a Miami Heat. I'm super excited. We've been talking about this for a while now. And I are going to bring up a lot of very interesting things about this whole situation. Fuck Kyle Lowry, you fat piece of – done with you. Get off my team, right? Kids acting like a kid, unfollowing people, we ain't got time for that. Tay Rozier, he always wanted to be a Heat. Um, I seen the exchange with him and D. Wade um, back in the uh, – I don't know how long ago it was, but he always wanted to be a Heat. And now – the big question to me is, can Terry and Tyler play together? And the reason why I'm saying this is because if you didn't know, Terry ranks second in the NBA in pick and roll efficiency. So we're going to see a lot of pick and roll with Terry and Bam, meaning Tyler is going to be not with the ball as much. And that's why I said he needs to go to the bench. He would never go to the bench, but I think that's the better fit. Duncan Robinson doesn't need the ball in his hand all the time. Tyler does to be efficient. So I think it will be a better Line up with Terry, Duncan, Jimmy when the rookie comes back and bam. And then if Tyler wants to jump up a bunch of shots on that second unit, go ahead. You know what I'm saying? And then you can still close the games, whatever the case may be. I still think that needs to happen ASAP. And it's going to be a fail out failing. Um, I don't know the word. It's going to be like a failing out because just because we trade for a player, you brought it up before, Amir, doesn't mean it's always going to work, right? So we need to fill it out, see how everything's going to go. We have 40-plus games left into the postseason where it's all that matters. So if we are starting off rocky, look at the Clippers. They started 0-5, and, and now they're one of the most dominant teams. We got one of the best coaches. They're going to figure it out. But not only, Terry Rose is not going to be averaging 27 points a game. I said, if he can get 15 to 18 points around there, but also adding playmaking it easier thoughts for Bay, for Tyler, um, stuff like that. I think that would um, be pretty good. Pretty yeah, man. There's, 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 yeah, yeah. We good. could hear you a little bit. I don't know if that was just me, but um, I, I agree with you. Like, obviously, Terry's not going to get 18 shots per game. He was on the Hornets. They didn't have Labella Ball for like six weeks, so he's going to have to play a role. And that role is a big upgrade, but he's going to have the ball in his hands. But obviously, Jimmy operates with the ball in his hands. Bam needs the ball in his hands to a certain degree. But I love you brought up that stat because I saw that today, too. Second best in terms of efficiency. So I think he's going to activate Bam out of bio. Uh, so Bam is not going to do what we all are annoyed about because all he's been doing is that mid-range jumper. It feels like he's not got to the, the paint as much lately. His dunks are down. He's going to be a loft right now. So I think it's huge. Ernest, welcome back. Missed you yesterday. What do you What are your thoughts on this, man? How oh are my you? god, freaking ecstatic, man! It's like it's like it's like I said in my channel today. Uh, this is a trade that the Heat made that benefited them for a few reasons. One, you don't give up Nikola Jovic, so now you have another toy in that starting power forward position. And I think we've all talked before. We love we all like Jovic in the starting four. You know, you got Caleb Martin, you got High Smith, you can even put Hakez. So you have a lot of options. Uh, but it's a huge upgrade to the point guard position. And honestly, Tyler Hero's been starting at the point the last two games. He's done it before this season. It's okay. I think Terry Rozier is better. He's averaging about seven assists a game. He's good with the ball in his hands. Like you guys said, pick and roll with Bam is going to be a beast. Now, look, Trent, I get it. I know 
I agree. Terry Rozier and Duncan Robinson is a more optimal starting lineup. With Jimmy, a starting four, and Bam. I get it. It's not going to happen. It's going to be Tyler and Terry Rozier starting in the backcourt. So is it going to work? Yes. Because we have the best coach in the NBA. He will figure it out, and it will work. That's my belief. I don't think that the Heat would have traded for Terry Rozier without knowing that. And this is a guy, a point that you were making earlier, Trent. He's not, it's, he's not always wanted to be in the Miami Heat. Dwayne Wade is just his idol. He plays like Wade. So now he's here. It's full circle. I just think it's a great deal. You get to keep Jovich. Yeah, you give a first-round draft pick. But look what we do with undrafted players, so I'm cool with it. Yes, sir. And think about this. <clears throat> One knock on him is his size. He's still a pretty athletic and quick. We know that. But also his defense. And there is some stat out there that I think Kyle Lowry like was doing better at the point of attack somehow, which we didn't see that. But think about his motivation. One, he's going to be in our system. He's going to learn how to fucking defend. But two, he was defending for a 10 and 31 team. We are the sixth seed, a playoff contender, and I, like a championship contender. Like that fool is going to be motivated to actually play, right? So Martel, hop in, buddy. What are your thoughts? I know you're pumped. Yeah, bro, listen, we finally got the upgrade that we needed long overdue. You know, we have a guy that he can create his own shot because teams have been really trying to double team Bam, double team Jimmy, especially like within the mid post. So you have another guy that now you can't necessarily double Bam in the post because if you double him, we're going to swing it to the key. And then now he has a wide open three. So we finally have the point guard that we need. We finally have a guy that actually wants to be involved, actually wants to take shots and Actually, he's on the same page with the team and actually wants to win. I don't know what Kyle Lowry was on. Thank God we got off that contract, too. But like I said, like at the end of the day, I'm just hoping that it can gel together. Tyler Hero's obviously going to have to step up defensively with Terry Rozier. And it's like what you just said. He was on a bad team before. You're not really going to have all the you know energy and all the um, confidence out there to go have you know all these stellar defensive stops because you know that you're going to lose the game anyway. So. I'm just glad that we finally just improved the roster. Now it's time to get off of Caleb Martin, Jovic, and a pick to get that four next to Bam out of bio or some type of a similar move. I think they might wait out for the buyout market, but we'll see. Let's say that we do wait out. for the, If we don't make a trade, we want to keep that pick because we're going to activate after the draft day. We're going to have our second first round pick. Um, we won't have Caleb as an asset because we'll probably let him walk at this point because of Terry's contract. But so he's going to be gone. But you can't. You got to trade him this year because we can't. You think so, though? Build. Yeah, we, we, can t- we, we cannot. Can, because we're building up all these players. We built up Gabe Vincent. We built up Matt Struess. We're going to build up now Caleb Martin. And then now we just let these guys walk away. Like we like we invested too much into them for them to walk for nothing, in my opinion. You know what let I mean? Me, I just think you got to flip let that. Me, let me go real quick, real quick, before I forget. Kyle Lowry was a $30 million expiring contract and age 37 Ka- caleb is like seven million so it's not like the end of the world if we keep him because he still has to show out like he still has to prove that he is worth that contract for another team and yeah. what are we complaining about all fucking year every fucking day there's a new injury at the wing spot like okay hawkes is out so we need caleb right now he comes back and then haywood's out you know like so i'm not i don't think we need to trade caleb but to your point if we could trade him and a pick, or him and Jovic, or him and whoever combination to upgrade at a power forward, center, whatever. I'm open minded to it again, right? But I don't think we need to. But anyway, yeah, no, we don't need Sorry to. About that. Yeah. I, I, I will say this though, right? The Heat are, are like six point three million dollars below the second apron. Um, opening like the taxpayer, like five million dollars. It that can only use. We can't make like a big big move after. The, I think it's the only big move we can make right now at the moment. Um, but I do think we need to make a second move. But let me just say this real quick. The reason why I believe they need to trade Caleb, look at these contracts. Jimmy's making $48.8 million next season. Bam's making $34.8. Um, Tyler's making $29. Terry's making about $25. And Duncan's making about $19 million. If we're not resigning Caleb, um, Caleb, there's no point of having him on this team because we can't afford him. Especially with his next contract, we just can't afford him at all. So I'm not saying he must. He could be part of the championship team. But if there's a good deal out there, I'm willing to do it ASAP right away. And I've been seeing a lot of Heat reporters and Heat writers are saying it's not done. The, the same dude that said Terry's coming to Miami, Greg Snyder. I'm sorry if I say his name wrong. So he just said that 
it's not done. Caleb's going to be next. So he called the Terry one. What did he say? Caleb's going to be next. He said Caleb is, needs to be traded. So I think that's the best move right there. Um, and so with the Miami Heat, they only could trade their 2030 first round pick at the moment. They can't trade the 2024 only on draft night. So we have Caleb, the 2030 pick, and Jovic. I don't know what can we get out of that, but I wouldn't be mad if Caleb stayed on the team. We're just probably going to lose him just like Max and Caleb, um, Max and Gabe. So I was thinking about this earlier. Um, those pieces exactly. Caleb, Jovic, and a first. What can that get you? I don't know what it can get us because of the contracts. Like they're making 10 million together, right? So like we're not going to take more money back because we're five million dollars from the second apron. If we get to that second apron, then we can't use our buyout piece. So yep. also we have um we because we're in the first apron right now, we're not able to get a buyout contract player that had 12 million or more. So basically, if like I heard on some episodes today if if a gordon hayward perhaps gets bought out he's making 20 million we can't buy him out but if a guy who we talked about i think martel brought this up pj tucker if he gets bought out because he, he's not getting any play time he's like 10 million so like he's a guy we can get but to your point trent i don't know how the money is going to work because him and jovich in a first round pick that's 10 million so like we can't get a lowry marketing for that we can't get a kuzma for that so i don't know yeah. what we could put together Ernest, i know you know i know you think about this um and know about the salaries and all that stuff. So what are your thoughts like on what Trent just said about that like hypothetical package? Hypothetical get? package, there's nothing out there you're going to get this better than Caleb Martin. So right there, I'm going to shoot that down. No, I won't trade Caleb Martin and Jovic because you're not going to get something better than them. There's not a $10 million player out there who's going to give you what Caleb Martin gave you in the Eastern Conference Finals last year. And people forget what value Caleb Martin brings. I understand he's an undersized four, but it's like you said, injuries happen on this team and it happens a lot. So if somebody goes down, Caleb Martin easily plugs in. Now, the reason why Caleb Martin's being in trade talks is because you have the emergence of Jaime Hawkins Jr. And you also got Haywood Highsmith. So you got guys that can fill the role, but I'm telling y'all right now in a seven game series, Caleb Martin got that dog in him. He proved it not only in the series against Boston. I don't know if y'all remember that shot he hit on Giannis's face when he went for that loose ball dive. Jimmy, you, you see it. Jimmy hit him the ball and he busted that three-pointer in his face. Experience goes a long way. Caleb got chemistry with this team. Caleb's built something with the, this team. I get that he hasn't played this year. I get that he's been injured. But you throw that motherfucker in a seven-game series with Jimmy, Bam, and all these guys, I'll take Caleb Martin over any other guy that I can get for $10 million. And I got to give up Nikola Jovic and possibly a 2030 pick? Hell nah. There's nobody out there that entices. The only way I would trade Caleb and Jovic is if, if it was along with, Low, uh, along with Lowry to get Spider or to get Martin Murray Martin. or to get, yeah, yeah. somebody better. Well, I, I don't think Jovic and Martin gets you anything that's better, especially than Martin when Martin brings in the playoffs. My opinion. You, can't even, you can't even get Dorian Finney Smith, who's making thir 14 million. You know, and they're asking I prefer for Caleb. I, I prefer Caleb. Caleb. And also, well, I prefer Jovic at I, age 20 versus him at age 30, right? He's hit a yep. ceiling. I, well, I don't think that's like – I think that's what's available to trade. I'm not saying throw all that in one trade. I just think Caleb's the only asset yeah. outside of Jovic in that first-round pick that we could possibly trade. And the reason why he's yeah. get, getting brought up that's is fair. because we just brought in Terry Rosier and this new tax thing, we're not paying him. So it's like either we're letting him go for free or – we get something out of it. That's how I look out of it. But, I mean, you did bring up a good point in the sense of you're not going to get anybody better. And don't get me wrong. I think Caleb is awesome. But this year has been up and down with injuries. And last year is last year. This is a new season. I yep. think Amen. he still has that in him. Don't get me wrong. I think he's still very, very good. But I need to continue to see. I need him to stay healthy. And um, we go from there. So, like I said, I don't mind keeping Caleb. I think he's excellent. But but you also said we got plenty of options, yep. plenty of options. So it's I'm up and I'm up and down with it. Like having on our team is a luxury. Having them not on our team is like okay, we still have these people to back them up. We all want Haywood Highsmith to continue to keep playing more, right? We love um ha Hamey, whatever his damn name is. Um so and then P 
people love Jovic. People love this dude. They want him to continue to keep playing. So that's why I don't see it as super, super bad. Obviously, you don't want to downgrade. But if the Miami Heat go out there and trade him, I'm not going to be too, too upset unless they trade him for, like, peanuts. Then I'm going to be like, okay, what are we doing? But yeah, but in a seven-game series, all those names that you threw, especially Jaime Hawkins, I love him. But in a seven-game series, a lot of times experience comes into play. And what Caleb Martin has done the last two years in the playoffs, man, you're, I don't think you're going to get that in another player. I mean, that, that's that's the point. I, I get what you're saying, man. But I think what the Heat are mainly thinking now, they got Rozier. That's it. With Caleb Martin, it's either let him walk, like Gabe Vincent, and, or not even Max Struess, but Gabe Vincent. Or if he balls out and the Heat win a championship this year, I think the Heat just might resign him. Go over, go over the salary cap, bring them back. I mean, that's a possibility too. Sounds crazy, but they could. Marto, what you think? I don't think they're gonna do it for Caleb. I, like I know they got love for him, but he, listen, you could always, you can find someone <laughs> like pretty much undrafted to do what he's doing right now. I know that he had a, you know, listen, all of our role players eventually they're gonna ball out, especially in. The playoffs, I don't know. I just don't see see them keeping, you know, Caleb long-term. Because Mickey's cheap. Because, listen, if he wasn't, bro, he would be signing people left and right. And money really wouldn't be an issue. But the fact that we're always talking about money with this team, he's probably – but, listen, like, I wouldn't even be surprised if, like, you know, like, if we don't re-sign, like, Terry Rozier, like, in two years. And he could be balling for the next two years. I wouldn't be surprised, like, if we don't re-sign him because that's what this team does. But – because they're always looking for the next guy. And especially with all these guys like in the G League balling out recently, that's where their mind is. They're always trying to find the cheaper option. That's why we have guys like Jamal Cain, Orlando Robinson. They're, they they would rather go with the cheaper option, and they will let you go. They don't care. Like if, Okay, like if you leave and you ball out, they don't care because they know the, the year after, that's it. You see what I'm saying? And that's pretty that's much what Gabe Vincent went through. That's what, uh, what uh, Kendrick Nunn went through. You know, so, I mean, Max Struess has been decent this year, surprisingly, because usually Miami Heat players, they fall off after they leave Miami. So, yeah, we'll yeah. see. No, you make a good point. You make a really good point, brother. That's true. So, we'll uh, Trent mentioned that, I guess, five reasons Greg Sylvander mentioned that we're not done. So, what kind of lateral type of move do you think we're going to make? Like, who will be up for that trade? Like, because, like, I went, we just discussed we don't want to trade Caleb. That's six million, seven million. Like, what are we gonna do? Pack us up, package up Thomas Bryant, Josh Richardson for a Patty Mills or someone? <laughs> Who are we gonna like? What are we gonna listen? Do? I, I'm, just, I, I'm just curious. What do you think? I, 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 let me let me say this because I, I gotta go soon. I'll say this. I think if we don't trade Caleb, it's done and over with. We are gonna be looking at the buyout market. I don't think there's gonna yep. be no other moves. Yep. I, I, yeah. That's it. The only thing that I would love to have, and maybe they're playing undersized once again, but I just like how they play, is a Royce O'Neal or a Dorian Finney-Smith. I like those two players. It's not happening, though, right? Um, yeah. So I think it's going to easily be a buyout. And um, what's his name? The Heat Report brought up yesterday that he's like, I could see us getting somewhat Alec Burks. <laughs> he's like I an like Alec, Burks, Alec Burks off a of buyout. And um, damn, he said another play. But I remember Alec Burks, and I was like, you know what? He may not get so much minutes, but when he does, he's a hooper. You know what I'm saying? It's not like a – and you got to remember, bio, bio players are never that great. They're just never going to – it's a, it's always going to be 50-50. They turn out good. They don't. So I, I think it's going to be bio. I don't think it's going to be no trade. But I do want to say this, and it's kind of changing the topic real quick because I wanted to say it earlier. Tyler Harrell says some interesting comments. He says, we are going to be able to play faster. That's – I don't know if that's technically throwing shots at Kyle Lowry. I don't think so. But he also says, he said it's time for an energy boost around here for sure, which definitely caught my attention because the energy, and Martel brought this up, when you look at the bench, they look just, they're just standing there. We mm -hmm. need, so that caught my attention a lot because not only are we viewing it, but Tyler pretty much just said it in this, in this statement, like we need that energy boost. And hopefully with this Terry Rose air trade, that gives us that boost. So Bio market, I think we, we don't got to worry about no more trades unless something crazy happens. Our focus is now bio market, and if somehow we get a big or a forward, <laughs> we'll be we'll be satisfied. But we also said in all these episodes, if we get Terry or Dejounte, we are going to be fine. So I love Caleb yep. for everybody in the comment section. I'm not saying let's just trade him away. I'm just saying for next season purposes, 
it just doesn't really make sense because we can't yeah. afford him. We're going to go over the aprons. We got all these big contracts, and we're not trading Duncan. We're not trading Tyler for just to bring in Kayla Mark. It's not happening. That's yeah. all I'm saying, chat. So, yeah. I mean, if there's an expiring contract out there, someone making the same amount, and we can bring them in. Like, for example, Miles Bridges. I I thought that's what I thought that was going to be the trade. I thought it was going to be Rozier, Miles Bridges know. for Caleb, Yovich, Lowry, and a first round draft pick. I literally thought we were going to have Miles Bridges. When I saw that trade, it surprised me. So that told me right there, okay, I think the Heat are done. Because yeah, who are done. you going to get for Caleb? Yeah. And who else can you package? Like, besides Duncan, Tyler, Jimmy, and Bam. Like, it just, I don't see a player. Unless that he come up with another trade, Caleb, for like a Miles Bridges or I'm like I'm looking at numbers. I mean, there's Kelly Olenek, but he's making too much. Like oh, man, I'm looking yeah, at expiring contracts. Like there's I, I don't really see anyone. Maybe in the comments, somebody will let us know and throw like an interesting idea. That'll be dope. But I'm just like working on the numbers and looking at stuff. Like I just don't see someone at seven million that can give you what Caleb can give you in the playoffs. Or anybody that's worth trading him a first round pick and a Jovic to get the type of players you mentioned, Trent, on the um the Nets. We don't like a Finney Smith and Royce O'Neal. They're fine, yeah. but like we don't need those people. Like we already have guys that have chemistry that are in our system. Like we don't need to do that type of move, I don't think. Yeah. Buyout buyout is something that you mentioned that makes a lot of sense. And we are gonna have our full MLE. So basically we'll have like six million. So that's going to be good because now we can be competitive with a Gordon. Hay we can't get Gordon Hayward because of the apron, but like in theory, a upper echelon type of buyout candidate, like Gordon Hayward is a pretty good candidate. He's better than like a PJ Tucker who's 38. Like this guy's still 33, like relatively young enough and averaging 15, five and five. Like we don't have to get a guy like we did with Kevin Love. We paid him only 1 million. We yeah. rewarded him for a second year, but now we have 6 million for that mid-level exception, which is like going to be beneficial. So I think that's the best move. Unless to Ernest's point, you look around, there's like a Patty Mills because, like, I feel I still think we do need a backup point guard versus Jay Rich or Duncan, I guess, being our playmakers or ball handlers. But we don't need it necessarily. But a Patty Mills could be cheap. We mentioned Thad Young. We've talked about DeAndre Hunter, PJ Tucker, but none of these move the needle to me, man. I just think the biggest thing is we upgraded Rozier. Offense has been horrendous. Defense has been trending back, and we're getting better in our defensive rating, um, even though it doesn't seem like it in those last three games. But offense is what we fucking need, and I'm I'm pumped, man. Let me ask you guys this real quick. Martel, I'm going to ask both of you, and I don't know if you're still here, Trent, but who? what is our optimal starting lineup? Let's like I want to project what our starting lineup is going to look like. Who do, you think, who do you think we should put in as our – Four, well, it's like we said before. Well, okay, so for the four, it has to be Haywood Heisman only because we got to start the game off good defensively. Like, whenever we start getting blown out, you know, down 15 in the first quarter, second quarter, we're probably not going to win the game because now we got to play catch up. And then the team, when there's two minutes left, like in the fourth quarter, they hit big shots and then they close the game out. So, you, for right now, like if it's not Kevin Love, but which, you know, Kevin Love is just that all comes down to matchups. But for now, it's definitely going to be Haywood Heisman, Bam out of bio. And I understand where everyone's saying that they want Duncan Robinson to start, but that's not going to happen on this team for some strange reason. I don't know. They don't want to be honest with Tyler Hero. If Ginobili can come off the bench, which I think Ginobili is way better than Tyler Hero, then I don't understand why he can't. I understand he has his agendas. He wants to be all-star and all this stuff. But for the unity of this team, for the team chemistry, for the way that this team plays complete, like, one through five, to be honest, Tyler really should be coming off the bench. But I understand why he's not. I mean, he's in his, what, his fifth year now. Sixth year now, I understand why, but it is what it is. You know, we'll see how good Tyler and uh, Terry look together. But technically, he should be coming off the bench, and because Duncan doesn't need the ball, he'll be able to cut slash, you know, run around. He'll be able to do so much. And then, like I said, now they can't double team Bam and Jimmy in the post because now you have Duncan and Terry Rozier running around. So we'll see. But we all know that Tyler's going to start anyway. So, what do you think, Ernest? Um. <clears throat> I actually optimal agree with Martin. Yeah, no, no. I mean, the optimal starting lineup um, would be Bam. Um, I would throw Caleb Martin, actually, as a starting four. I just like how I, I – that's the thing, bro. Caleb Martin and Haywood Highsmith, like, I, I agree with Martel. It, it, it's really matchups, and that's the great thing about us. There's really not a, the perfect starting power forward. Like, I agree with Martel. Highsmith is perfect. 
but maybe some games, Jovic may be better. Maybe some games, Martin will be better. We can play matchup with the starting power forward. That's the beautiful thing. Kevin loves the backup five, so I would leave it as is. Um, but I would really love if the lineup was Butler, Duncan, and Rozier. That, to me, is the optimal starting lineup. Um, I think, Martel, to your point, the reason why Tyler doesn't want to come off the bench is because I don't think the NBA – gives these type of awards to bench players. So for yep. example, whether he's starting or coming off the bench, he's going to be averaging 35 to 38 minutes a game. But the NBA that does the votings and the journalists that do the votings, they're not going to look at a six man and put him in the all NBA team or in the all-star team. That's why he wants to start. It's that bullshit that I'm talking about. People forget in 1995, Dan Marley started in the All-Star game and he was a six man. Like, there's nothing wrong. It's not about who starts. It's about who ends the games. But that's why I feel Tyler Hero feels like he has to come off the starting lineup simply because of that. Uh, but, yeah, that's going to be the lineup. Rozier, Hero, Jimmy, Caleb Martin, and Ben moving forward. That's what I think. What do you think, Trent? Do you agree with so, Mr. Marcel? We should start. You know, a lot of people are going to continue to say I hate on Tyler and stuff like that. But y'all see, Ernest, Martel, Almir, pretty much just all agree with me that he needs to go to the bench. And if you're a real Heat fan, you would know we do not play that well when the big three is together. Amir brought out a stat. We are 31 and 32 together as a big three when we're all healthy. Now, I'm not the smartest but that's not a positive record. So, like everybody says, Duncan does not need the ball in his hand. And with adding a Terry Rozier, I don't know if you guys know, he attempts eight threes a game. So, you have Terry Rozier with eight threes a game. Jimmy, luckily, Jimmy doesn't take so much shots. In the plus, it is going to be interesting. But in the regular season, Jimmy doesn't take so much shots. We are going to see a lot of three-point shots up with him and Tyler in that starting lineup. So many three-point attempts um, because they love shooting the three and stuff like that. So, obviously, um, it's interesting to see that if Spoke can bench these other players, he needs to have a talk with Tyler and let him know. But, like you said, Ernest, you made a good point. He plays for himself and not the Heat. And I think that all comes with maturity and his age um, because I really can't compare him to, example, like Russell Westbrook because he's near end of his career. He's – he done all yep. the things he has done as a starter. So he took that back row. Tyler is, yep. you know, kind of up and coming. So I understand it. You know, you getting all first team, which he's not, but that's more money in your pockets. So I, I understand all the, the awards. But when you look at Jimmy, he doesn't care about none of that. And that's just because of his age and maturity. So if yep. Tyler continues to act like this and he's our future, then I have some concerns, but at the moment, I understand it. Trust me. We was all young. We all want the awards. We all want the shiny stuff, so I get it. But I think it's going to be Tyler, uh, Terry Rosier, um, Jimmy, of course, Bam. In the four position, I think we all agree. It's all matchup-based, and I think that's what makes the Miami Heat one of the best teams in the league because if we want to space out the floor, fuck it. Let's bring in a Caleb. He going to splash that shit, right? If we want to go all defensive, let's bring in a Haywood I. Smith. We can do that, too, or a Caleb Martin or whatever the case may be. So I think that's what makes this team so deep. Who do I think they go with? I think, personally, in my opinion, I think Caleb makes more sense. It brings more offense. We've been struggling the last three games, only scoring like 90-plus points, shooting 40% as a team and 30 as a percent as a three-point line. That's awful. Adding Terry and putting Caleb in there, that's going to change a lot of things. And also, it's going to take away um, less – doubling bam and less doubling jimmy and stuff like that because we got players that can score all around the court now yeah i got a quick one for you guys um the three of y'all let me know what you think about this this just came to my head what if the what, miami heat went with a positionless starting lineup that led with terry rosier being the six man let me break it down what if they went with bam out of bio caleb martin Jimmy Butler, Jaime Jaquez, and Tyler Hero in the starting lineup. You got five guys that are 6'5 and above, can guard and play multiple positions. 
Then you got Terry Rozier, Duncan Robinson, and Kevin Love as your top three coming off the bench. So each of the guys are playing like 25 minutes, 30. You got Caleb playing just 20. You know how Spo likes to go eight guys. So I'm talking about a playoff lineup. And then maybe on the ninth guy, sprinkle Richardson, Highsmith, Jovich, whoever, you know, whatever matchup is available. What do you guys think about that? What's the starting lineup again? Say it again. Uh, position this lineup. People that can play multiple positions and play. Bam, Caleb at the four, Jimmy at the three, Jaime Hawkins at the two, and Tyler at the one. You got Rozier, Duncan Robinson, and Kevin Love as your main bench players because you know how Spo likes to go eight guys. And then for the ninth, either Highsmith, Richardson, or Jovic, like whoever, whatever matchup's driven. So, okay, so just a few things. I don't like Caleb at the four because he doesn't like being at the four. He said it a lot that, you know, he's not used to it. He doesn't like it. So I'm not going to okay. position to where he doesn't want to be. It's kind of like with Jovic. Jovic says okay. he's better. I'm not going to put him there. You see what I'm saying? Because Yeah, I got you. Struggling with it, you know. With Tyler, to be honest, even though he's a shooting guard, I think that his that he struggles with his handle a little bit. Yep. I'm not comfortable with um, Tyler here being a point guard because he's, to be honest, he doesn't really want to pass the ball like that. He'll rebound. He'll try to defend. He'll score. You know, he'll do the floaters. He'll do the threes. But he doesn't really like passing the ball like that. So I'm not really mm -hmm. going to put the ball in his head. And I've seen it. And watch. There's been a lot of clutch games where he does lose the ball. He gets stripped half court, all types yep. of stuff. And I think Terry Rozier, to be honest with you, he didn't come here to come off the bench. Like, he wants to hoop. You know, he's finally getting out of that mindset where he was in Charlotte and where he knew he wasn't going to win anything. Now he has more of a winning mentality. And, uh, like, I think he's going to be playing elite defense. He's going to be, you know, coached by one of the best coaches in the league. And he has that alpha mentality to hit big shots. So I know for a fact he's probably going to want to start. Nice. I, I agree with all the Tyler Hero stuff at point guard. Um, I don't mind Caleb being in there as our four. But um, I mentioned this yesterday, Ernest, when you weren't here. I was saying that I think – because I like the idea of Terry coming off and on off the bench playing with Duncan, um, Hawkins or Haywood or whoever's on the bench with him and K Love because he could just outright be the bucket getter. But I was thinking we could stagger him, like he starts, but then we stagger him and Tyler, right, so that they're not on the floor the whole time. Or like we want to stagger it a little bit where even Terry and Jimmy are not on the floor because Jimmy yeah, plays the whole first quarter, he takes a rest, like then let let Rozier come back in early and cook. So I kind of like where your head's at, where t like Terry is playing more with the second unit so he yeah. can get more shots. Because he shot 18 shots per game. He's probably going to be like in the 10, 12 range, right? I mean, assuming Tyler's shots will go yeah. down a little bit. Jimmy's might stay where it's at. I think Bams will probably – his are dipped a little bit as well. But I was going to give my optimal lineup too because like, I think before we move on, um, I like the idea of Haywood starting. So – Terry, Tyler, Haywood, Jimmy, and Bam. Because I think our big three on our bench coming off the bench then would be the, the, the eight-man rotation then would be Duncan Robinson, Kayla Barn, and Jaime. I could also switch Jaime and Haywood, but I like the idea of Hawkins coming back off the bench. One, he's injured right now, so of course it's going to be Haywood or Caleb starting in the meantime. But – He's a rookie. He's been balling out against starters, obviously, but like him playing against second units, that's even better for him, more of an advantage. So he's he could he could thrive on the bench or starting. And I like the idea of Caleb Martin on the bench too, because he'll have the ball more in his hands. Like he likes to attack the basket. He likes to he likes to create essentially. He's not the best shot creator, but he's someone who can get downhill. He'll be our most athletic guy with Jaime off the bench. Because with Jimmy on the court, Bam on the court, Tyler on the court. Terry on the court, like Caleb's not going to be doing much. So I think if he's on the bench with Duncan, who's going to be like our playmaker essentially, and then Caleb is going to be spreading the floor. You got Jaime, who's going to be the Swiss Army knife, cutting weak side, fucking doing everything, yeah. moving off the ball. And then Caleb can kind of be that like Jimmy, like, you know, that, well, I guess Hawkins is the Jimmy, but you know what I mean? He's going to be like more, he could be more of an alpha. So that's what I think. But either way, it's a good problem to have, man. Just plug it yeah. in this Rozier. We're so deep again. We're almost healthy. We just need to stay that way, I think. Um, let me ask you guys this last question. Also, so, yeah, go for it. Can I say something? Quick. So, yeah. with this Terry Rose air trade now, too, we are used to, we're so used to injuries. So, like, we got to expect it at this point. So, say if 
a Tyler goes out, we technically still got uh, Terry, Jimmy, and Bam. That is still very, very good, right? Or just any opposite of anybody getting hurt. Because I think we just have to expect it now. Any any of our star players go out, we have Terry to hold the load a little bit for the regular season. And we he's a proven scorer in his league. I mean, he drops – the last time I believe he played, he's dropped 30-plus points. The dude can hoop. So I think that's another positive thing about this whole thing. Can I put my opinion on the, the bench thing about Terry too? Yeah, go for it. So I just – I think Terry will come off would come off the bench because he's a veteran in this league and he understands he just wants to win at this point. I don't think he came to came to Miami to come off the bench, but I think he would if Spo talked to him about it. I think it'll make more sense, even though he needs to talk to Tyler about it. But you know that's that's just never gonna go anywhere. Um, so I think Terry realizes, and he came off the bench before. He came off the bench for Boston. I think he even came off the bench for Charlotte for a little. So he he he's used to it. Um, and Terry and Duncan just make more sense to me personally. So, yeah. Speaking of Terry, he's averaging 29 in three games against the Heat, averaged 29 points per game. So that guy is a bucket getter. I think Trent secretly wants Tyler Hero to get hurt. So it could be we could test out this new big three with Rozier getting all his shots, all his minutes. I'm just kidding. Don't say that. Don't speak that. I'm just it's kidding. From it's from No way. That's bad. That's bad juju. I don't want to say that. Juju. For real. All right, and when do you think he's going to play, in the though? comments are just going to make it seem like I want him hurt now. No. no. I'm, just fucking, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, nobody here wants any injuries for no the one, Heat. we got to figure no this injuries. out. I love Tyler. No. Yes. I don't, even, I don't even want injuries against my worst enemies. When I was younger, of course I did. But now it's like I don't want to wish that on them because they're going to say you beat this team without AD, without KD, without whatever, right? I don't want no excuses built in either. I don't want us to have excuses. So, um, But, yeah, last thing I was saying, when do you think he's going to play? We need him. Is it going to be uh, available for Memphis? Do you think he's going to come back against no, Boston? No. New no, York? No, no, no. What do you think? Um, let I me see. Wait. So he's, I don't think he's going to play tomorrow. Definitely not. He's got to get acclimated with the system. Um, I could see a first game. I mean, why not Thursday against Boston? I don't see why not. He, he's probably going to get with the team. He probably got with the team today uh, or maybe tomorrow. You know, they'll have a practice. Um, but most likely it'll probably be Saturday just so he can get some practice time in, you know, get with the system. But I, I don't see why not on Thursday, most likely Saturday. Against the yeah, team I got after them. Yep. I, I haven't played, you know, trades, it happens quick. I mean, they miss, they tend, they tend to miss only one game and then they go out there and, you know, go, but I want to talk about the schedule and this is why it's so important to him playing. We have a nine game stretch before the trade deadline approaches. And we talked about this in the last episode. And I even talked about it with the other dude, the heat report. He said, he will be lucky to go five and four in that stretch. Now with Terry Rozier, does that change things? And I think it may not because we need to find a way how this is all going to work. But later in that season, before playoffs starts, we're going to know this team's ready for the playoffs. Right now, we can't expect to go out there and be perfect. That's not the case at all. So this nine game stretch is going to be huge. We got some tough games ahead of us. Even the Spurs and Wizards, we can't say those are easy games because the Heat make the easy games hard for them at the end of the day, no matter what. Hopefully not anymore, brother. Not That's hopefully, the truth. hopefully with Terry, man, he might be the the last missing puzzle piece, you know? So I feel a lot more confident playing against the Suns, the the Clippers, the Celtics, the Knicks, all these teams that we're gonna be playing in the next, you know, two weeks. So No, no, we're there. We're there. I mean that 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 trade just put us right there. I mean, especially with the moves that Boston and Milwaukee made in the offseason, which by the way, they got they fired their coach. Haha. Uh mm -hmm. but <laughs> but nah, man, I I think with the moves that they made, this trade, it puts us right there. I we've said it before. The hole that we had was at the point guard. We fixed it. We didn't give up Jovich. We we basically switched Kyle Lowry for Terry Rozier. Let's fucking go. We got this. And imagine, yeah, like if we play in the finals again, hypothetically against the Nuggets, and and we have the players available, we have a Rozier, we have a Hawkes, we have a Tyler Hero that we didn't have last year. That could be enough. That Just be throw enough. Jovic on Jokic. Just get in his head. I don't know. They're they're both buddies, you know. Just oh, throw him on him. <laughs> oh, Dom, Joker will kill him, but still, just uh, spit some Sylvania in my and mess with his head. I don't know. Joker <laughs> would get fucking 101 and beat Welt's record, right? He's, he's like, oh, I beat you at 70. I got Jokic who weighs 100 pounds on me. 
be like, I'll be like, Jovic, you're out there for five minutes. Use all six fouls on him. Go. <laughs> all right, guys. That was a great episode. I think we're at time now, but that was awesome. What a good day. Super pumped. Can't wait to see this new iteration. Hopefully it works, man. Spoh's got a Let's new go. toy. Let's go. Mad mad scientist. He'll tinker and figure out the best rotation. So there you go. I'll see you guys later, and hopefully we'll be back with another episode next week. Thanks, guys. And that's enough said. <laughs>